Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD and I'm coming at you guys with my Failcraft series. This is Failcraft number three. And as always, I've been combing through the user submitted replays to find the best replay to broadcast to you guys. Of course, this one is a good one. I promise you guys, all my Failcraft games are always top notch, fun, epic fail replays where you see somebody just wish they could smack themselves upside the head and just quit at life. This is gonna be game number three of my Failcraft series once again, guys, and I have to ask you guys to please, 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 if you guys are gonna send me a Failcraft submission, send it in to hdreplays at gmail.com and describe the game to me in the, in the you know, the subject of the email. Uh, you know, title it with something that catches my eye, describe the game to me in some way that really, you know, catches my eye, because, I can't tell you guys how many games I went through that were just absolute pure BS. Like, seriously, most of the games I went to were not good at all. They were just not good games. So, I know you guys don't want to see like someone saying, Oh my god, HD, I played this most epic ZVP man and I'm in the Silver League and it was like a 50 minute Zerg versus Protoss and I eventually won the game. And yeah, it was basically him just turtling the entire time. So, yeah, dude. That's not a good game. So yeah, please describe the game to me that you guys send in as a Failcraft submission. Remember, Failcraft doesn't necessarily need to be your opponent failing. If you want to be put on blast, it can be you failing as well. So, um, I'm just gonna have fun with these games, guys. And, uh, you know, I've been casting a lot of pro games lately. Korean pro games, to be exact. I want to do another ladder game pretty soon, but... To close out this weekend, I want to bring you guys an awesome Failcraft game. So this is going to be Zengor versus Mew Mnemonic. Mnemonic, kind of a cool name there. Mnemonic Devices. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but essentially it's a little psychological thing. Uh, yeah, but Mnemonic is going to be the Red Protoss. How cute is that? Protoss, psychological, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, he's going to be the Red Protoss at the top right here of this lava map. I don't exactly recall the name, but it is one of the ladder pool maps right now. And let me tell you guys, this map I actually hate very much as a Zerg player. Um, you know, there's certain maps that I love. Metalopolis, Tauterim Altar, those maps I love. This map, not a big fan of. The natural is just, well, the third or the natural, whichever one you want to take first, is kind of a weird, has this weird little dynamic right here with this, like, Great Wall of China in between. Um, it has a lot of interesting features on this map, but I'm not a big fan, even though, yes, you know, it's on the Char tile set, it should be the Zerg homeworld, but it doesn't really give you that much of a bonus as a Zerg player. Anyways, yeah, this is gonna be a uh, PVZ, and Mnemonic here is gonna be opening up with what seems to be a pretty standard game, and let's go ahead and check the APM tab, because this is gonna be a fairly good indicator of where these players stand. I mean, yes, this is the Wood League, as I always like to call it, should retitle this series the Wood League. <laughs> but no, this is gonna be, I would say their players are about, I don't know, maybe Diamond to Low Masters. I, maybe not Low Masters, but maybe about Platinum to Diamond is about where I would say these players stand. Just based on their build so far and their APM, they seem to have solid build orders. Uh, their APM is a bit on the low side, but you know, so far their builds have been quite impressive. Nothing I can fault as of yet. Um, so Mnemonic here is going to be able to hold the front door, no cheese to see yet from any of these players, which is actually a new, you know, it's kind of a breath of fresh air since we've been seeing cheese in Failcraft almost exclusively. So far, no cheese as of yet. Zangor here is going to be, uh, having his hatchery down pretty quickly, so I like his build order so far, getting that fast hatchery down, always a good idea, Zerg. Transferring a couple of workers over, not too shabby at all. And as far as uh, Mr. Mnemonic Devices goes here, he's going to be going for a 3-gate expand, which uh, I kind of like as well. So far, so good. These guys have a pretty good build order. So, so far, if you guys are in, you know, <laughs> Wood League, uh, Bronze League, Copper League, uh, yeah, I know Wood League doesn't exactly exist, but if you guys are in those lower leagues right now, you guys can definitely learn a thing or two from these guys. They're um, So far, they've had uh, solid openings. And, you know, here comes the Nexus going down. Uh, you guys might be wondering, you know, why do Protoss need to get three gates before expanding? Well, essentially, there's a couple ways you can play an expansion style for Protoss. You can expand um, right away without getting anything at all. You can do like a Forge Fast Expand, something like that, which is good on a map with a shared choke, with like a very narrow choke, excuse me. This map doesn't have a very narrow choke, although... 
Actually, it kind of does. You can kind of forge fast expand on this map. Well, mnemonic isn't forge fast expanding. Ah, that's the reason why there's a back door right here. So the other options you can have as Protoss is you can one gate expand or three gate expand. And um, one gate expand is actually really, really good um, on certain maps. Three gate expand is actually a little bit better on other maps. And it's a little bit of an interesting dynamic. Uh, but I think Mnemonic has chosen to go for 3-gate expand this time around simply because, you know, those 3-gates give you that production you need to defend your natural and keep your nexus alive, so... It's just a little bit of insight into the Protoss mind. But, uh, we'll see what, uh, Zangor kind of cooks up here. He's been droning up pretty heavily so far, which I really like. He's been playing a very solid style. He's got a good 44 drones so far, and he's... Ugh. Building two spine crawlers. I actually don't really like this too much. Because, look, you've got to build spine crawlers here and you've got to build spine crawlers there. Uh, it's just not a solid place. So I would much rather just not build crawlers because if you're going to build them, you should build them at the shared area, which is like right here. Uh, but since you can't, another reason why this map is not so great for Zerg. Um, I would prefer just building attacking units, but whatever. Zangor has decided to build a couple crawlers. Mnemonic here has now gotten four gates up. And he's going to be making quite a few units, and it looks like it's going to be uh, an attack coming out of uh, Mnemonic here. So you know what, so far I don't see anything too crazy th thus yet, but I promise you guys this is the game that I, I mean, I comb through all the replays, I look for the best ones. This one is certainly going to get a little bit interesting, and uh, you guys will just have to wait and see what happens. But uh, Zangor here is still chilling with this Ling's Mnemonic, building up quite the army, and it's time to move out. So he's going to be pushing with uh, about, let's see, how many stalkers is that? That's about eight stalkers, seven sentries or so, a couple of zealots to boot. Pretty dangerous army around this time for Zerg, most Zerg players at least. And if we look at the supply tab, we can see that Mnemonic is actually sitting at a higher amount of supply than Zangor is. Uh, and a lot of that is based off the fact that, you know, Zangor, he built these spines in the beginning. It's not all that helpful. Uh, and I guess his drone, I mean, his drone saturation looks pretty good, but in, it, just in general, you know, he allowed the Protoss to kind of get this expansion, and he's got all these spine colors, which aren't going to be, I don't know, I don't think they're going to be that helpful. Especially if Mnemonic decides to just attack right up the main. So, uh, we'll just see what Zangor is going to do here. I really don't agree with him leaving the Lings inside the main. He should be chilling with them on the outside so he can flank the Protoss army. But, uh, here comes Mnemonic. This is Failcraft, anything can happen, and he runs down to the natural, which I totally don't agree with, but you know what, he's gonna go for the engage here, he launches all of his force fields out, and not the best engagement here for your mnemonic, and really not the greatest force fields. Um, I don't even know what the idea here was the force fields behind the back, there wasn't even any zerglings back there, but he manages to break through the crawler just with pure brute force, and he's gonna go ahead and launch a couple more force fields here just for safety, okay, that's all right. Gonna kill off the spine crawlers. Now the drones for Zangor are being pulled off the mineral line to surround the stalkers, I would imagine. More reinforcements warping in because there is a pylon down here. And Zangor, <laughs> no, Mnemonic ends up force fielding out his own units here. I totally don't know what the idea here with Mnem is with Mnemonic's force fields. I mean, not the best force fields I've seen, but hey, whatever gets it done, right? Force field spam all over the place, as long as it works. So, Mnemonic here is going to be able to break down this hatchery with just, like I said before, brute force. Um, he's not really microing his units that he's warped in right now, and he is going to be able to take down the hatchery with superior numbers. There goes the hatchery, splat. Three eggs now warping in, but those eggs may end up going down. Actually, no, eggs are actually pretty beefy. So, um, <laughs> Mnemonic has pretty much crushed Zangor to a point where he's got almost double the supply, and there's really no way Zangor can lose. I mean... I mean, yes, this is Failcraft, anything can happen, I know, guys. But Mnemonic is, you know, pretty far ahead right now. And if he loses, this is just going to be epic fail on his part. But, uh, let me look at the army he's got out here. It's huge! He could, I don't know if he could A-move through those spine crawlers, but he can keep a contain game on Zangor for almost infinity ever. <laughs> so, we'll just see what happens. And, ah, Zangor going to be going for the Nidus network. So, you know, I, I kind of like the play. I mean, he's already lost his hatchery. He's contained inside one base. He's got all these forces. He can't actually run out and attack. Why not? Just go for the Nidus. His overlord is now preparing for the uh, assault, the amphibious assault, or Lavibious La Assault, I don't know. Uh, he's gonna go for the Nidus Network here, and uh, we'll see what what he can do. Uh, Mnemonic now grabbing the third, which 
is actually, you know, not the best idea. If you're contained a Zerg into one base, you should be just happy with two bases as a Protoss. Because if you grab that third, I mean, more likely than not, the Zerg is trying to cheese you, as we can see here. Um, you know, he's on one base, he's in a desperate situation. There's really no point to getting the third. But... We'll just see what happens. Zangor's Nidus comes up. The unit's deciding to be lazy and don't want to come out yet. And I guess Eumonic, hearing the Nidus, has decided to just go ahead and barrel up the ramp. And still the forces aren't coming out. There we go. Zangor flooding in with all of his links and his roaches. And here we are. We have a base race situation. Zangor's spine crawler is all going to go down instantly. And he decides to just abandon base with everything he's got. I mean, I kind of agree with that. There's really no point to just sticking around. You might as well just go all in if you're going all in. And the Queen and the Jerones have arrived. Zangor is actually doing some pretty good damage to the production facilities of Mnemonic, and Mnemonic at the same time is just crushing through Zangor's main. So it's become an all-out base race situation, but you know, Mnemonic's got double the supply of Zangor uh, at 125 over 61. So, uh, he is, uh, he's in a pretty good spot. I don't see him losing this game in a base race situation. Although Zangor is getting, <laughs> is gone ahead and built a base inside Mnemonic's base. So he's building a base within his base just so he can laugh at him while he Nidus's his main. Uh, but he's lost everything. Uh, essentially, there's only one drone chilling back here. No hatcheries at all. The entire Protoss squadron, legion if you will, has been pulled back from the offensive to deal with the Zerg threat at home and I mean as soon as this Protoss army arrives this is gonna be curtains for, for Zangor. There's just no way Zangor can hold this off but he's gonna give it his best shot. Roaches, drones, hydras and even a queen to boot. Mnemonic just has to barrel his way up this ramp and that army is toast. Toast Atola. And here we are, here's the engagement. Um, Mm, I don't exactly agree with those forces because all these units are actually stuck back here. Once again, what is the idea with these force fields? This just makes me want to throw my head against the wall. I mean, uh, sometimes when Protoss players play, guys, I mean, when you're playing as a Protoss, you don't need to force wield the army in half all the time. You actually got to sit back and think, is the force field going to be beneficial to me at all? It's not always beneficial to just cut the army in half and oh my god, I cannot believe it. Zangor, with some timely reinforcements, is actually going to be able to crush Mnemonic's larger army all because of just a poor engagement spot and just poor force fields in general. Those sentries were absolutely worthless. So, I can't believe I'm saying this. Zangor is pushing down right now with his forces. It's probes against roaches and hydras, and we all know how this is going to turn out, and Zangor is going to be able to pull... I think he's going to be able to pull a somewhat of a comeback. Uh, he is gonna kill all those probes off, and he is gonna go for straight up killing off the Protoss main. But what does Mnemonic have? Mnemonic actually has some four, four Zealots that just warped in, so okay, he's not out of the woods yet. Uh, I mean, he's not, you know, totally out of the game yet. He's got a thousand minerals, 900 gas, he can definitely warp in a lot more units. These four Zealots gonna come down the ramp to attack, and Zangor's Hydra getting transfused at the last second. Beautiful transfuse. Zangor also microing the queen back, launching another transfuse. Beautiful micro by Zangor, well played right there. And actually, Mnemonic is running out here. He's got three warp gates down here, but they are on cooldown. He can't actually warp anything in. He's actually got a total of four warp gates, but he can't make anything because everything is on cooldown. So he's going to go ahead and chrono boost them out. And there are four stalkers that just got warped in. Uh, excuse me, four stalkers plus three zealots that just got warped in. So Mnemonic, it's going to come down to a micro war. Four stalkers, three zealots versus a handful of roaches, a queen, and a few hydras. We'll just have to see who has the better micro. One roach has been taken out. Mnemonic is going to be able to pop the queen off instantly as well. And oh my goodness, it's going to come down to the micro. Zangor tried to micro that last hydra back. All the zealots have gone down. All the roaches have gone down. It's just hydras versus stalkers. And I think Mnemonic has enough stalkers to take this down. But a couple of zerglings coming out of the random hatchery in the main, uh, in the new main at the very least. So it's just a bunch of links that flooded down at the very last second and maybe enough. Mnemonic trying to micro his stalker. That goes down. The stalkers are all dropping. Mnemonic pulls his probes away from his third to help defend and it's just a few hydras and links against the stalker. This hydra is going down. The last hydra is gonna go down. It has... Oh my god! It killed all the last probes! With 15 kills that hydra is a complete boss. It killed the, the last two probes in the last second and oh no Zangor not on auto fire the Hydra goes down and Zangor has two links left over is pulling it away with red HP kills off the last probe and oh my 
goodness, guys, if we pull up the units tab, Zangor actually only has two Zerglings, three Zerglings, and two drones on the map, and that's why he's microing so hard right now. Mnemonic only has three probes and an Observer. Scratch that, he's got two probes now. However, he has 260 minerals, which means if he can get a pylon to power this gateway, then he'll be able to warp in a zealot and that will be enough to win the game and oh my god mnemonic you just canceled your gateway what are you doing man what are you doing you need your gateway up all right just let the pylon go up you can warp in a zealot and you'll should be fine so uh, all right well <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He just canceled his pylon now, so this is just an epic fail. Uh, all right, now he just, I guess he decided to cancel the pylon to build a gateway. But now he doesn't have enough minerals to make a zealot anymore, so it's gonna be three probes versus two drones and two, and two zerglings. Oh no, the last couple probes go down, it's just a single probe left, and Pneumonic calls a GG. Wow. That was an epic facepalm, 100% grade A fail. He had the game at so many points in this game, and he just let it slip through his fingers. He canceled the gateway multiple times, he canceled the pile on powering the gateway, he end, ended, ended up canceling all of his resources to the point where he didn't have enough to make anything, except actually he could have still made a sentry. I... Uh, I don't know if a sentry can be two zerglings and two drones, maybe not, but he certainly wasn't... I don't think he was totally out of the game yet. But wow, what a complete epic blunder, and Zangor wins this game out of the blue, literally, out of nowhere, wins the wins the game against Humonic. So, well guys, that is <laughs> that is an epic fail if I've ever seen one. I, I, I have nothing else to say about this game, except I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we're going to have Failcraft number four coming up next. Please send me in your most awesome fail replay. It can be you, it can be your friend, it can be your brother, sister, mother, daddy, I don't care. Send it in, give me a good description, I'll cast the game. And as for now, Mnemonic, you win the Epic Fail of the Week award, my friend. GG.